record also displayed a hitherto unsuspected sense of dynamics and an emotional scope. Kicking off on track 13, purely because of Korn's superstitious beliefs of ending an album on track 13, the industrial influence got the life, stretched the parameters of what Korn were about, as did most of the album's new songs. The considerably more touching Justin, about a terminally ill boy who met the band, displayed a softer side to them. The end result was an album that could well be Korn's swan song, and one that has found the band's ever-growing throng of musical imitators scurrying back to the chalkboard. An ambitious new record redefining the school of music Korn defined in the first place. For their next musical onslaught, Issues, the band wanted to try out a new approach. Always paranoid about distancing themselves from their fans, they sought out new ways of involving the kids by way of their official website and the many fan sites that had by now grown into the hundreds. The whole process took us four months to write and record it. It was relatively really fast for us. It went really fast because uh, our producer, Brendan O'Brien, liked to keep things moving and we have a tendency to goof off. And Bad. You know, I think we took all the elements of all the albums. I don't think it's different. I don't think it's groundbreaking new level kind of stuff because we didn't want to say that. Um, I think we've just accumulated over the years all the, the three previous albums and incorporated it in one and just made it a different thing. I think the first three albums were, we did a certain type of music and then like the uh, follow the leader was like the closing chapter and that kind of, of what was going on as soon as so many bands came out and diluted what we were doing so we just stepped it up and did something slightly different but, but, if you had to i don't know it's just a different vibe i think it's the darkest album we've done definitely um most emotional um musically it's incredible i, I don't know i don't have to say i don't want to sit here and say it's the next level kind of I, I don't think, I just think it's different. This philosophy permeated right down to the choice of cover art for the new album. Not content on choosing one cover for issues, the band also released three other limited edition covers to give an opportunity to share the limelight amongst the Corn Army. Whose idea was it to, uh, mine? Yes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, uh, the fans, letting the fans do the cover art, and why, uh, why'd you choose four? Just you I don't to... remember whose idea that was. Did no, we? I don't either. We just Whoever's idea, idea was, it was, it was a, cool a good idea. idea. I don't remember. But I, that was a good... We could go with mine. It was his idea. We'll just say that. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was fun to see how many... Well, we got over like 25,000 entries, and it was just cool to see our fans um, draw pictures, how they interpret the band. And it was just a good idea just to give back to our fans, because we're always trying to invent ways just to let our fans in more and become part of the band and get involved with us. They, I mean, they look, they had their fans make different covers. And not only that, they came out with four different covers just to, I mean, just so more of their fans could have some of their art out there. I mean, that, that was great. I mean, that was, that was interesting. I mean, not only that, I mean, Korn constantly has something going on with their fans. I mean, if you look at their website, I mean, if you look, if you, if you get into the fan club, I mean, if you look into it, there's always something that's, that's out there for the fans. Why? Because Korn is a fan-based band. <clears throat> oh, it this was guy kind of liked it. He, he held on to it, took it home with him. I was going to take it home like three times. I didn't think we were going to use it, but it ended up being, it just, it looked right. It just, I don't know. We all agreed on that one. The doll looks sad, was, all right? It was, it was, it was good. It was, do it, picking out was hard because we all had to like it because there'd be like one that Philly liked and I didn't like or one that Head liked and Mikey didn't like. So we all had to be in agreement at five of us of the cover because it's our cover. So it, it was tough picking them all out. But, um, that was like the only one we all agreed on, huh? Yeah, we just thought that was it. I didn't agree on it. <laughs> he didn't. He goes, yeah, he okay, did. whatever. Yeah, he did. I still like the stick figure the only one. Yeah, I that was that. mine. All right, there's all right. really no significance of the doll. It, 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 it doesn't really mean anything. It's just cool. It just looks cool, man. Issues was released to critical indifference but huge commercial success, entering the Billboard charts at number one and selling an incredible 600,000 copies in its first weeks.
The success of Issues would crown an incredible achievement for the band as the combined album sales or their music smashed through the 10 million mark. At one point during the Issues promotional tour, MTV made a startling announcement about the band. What's the worst rumour you've ever heard about yourselves? Worst rumour? Yeah, we all are gay and have AIDS. Yeah. You've heard that? Uh -huh. I heard something worse. What? I heard that, uh... Worse we, we that? Got, heard that we died. These a lot of smart kids out here uh, hacked into the MTV website, I believe it was, and wrote a super eloquent story how Jonathan Davis was killed and they had all these names of doctors and this and how sad it was. And uh, I mean, people freaked out. I was, I was on the radio here at K-Rock at the time. People were calling, people were crying. It was like Kurt Cobain had died. It was the same type of effect. And um, I had David's cell phone number, David from the band. I called him, I couldn't get in touch with him. Then I called up uh, their management. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Where is Jonathan? They're like, he's on a bus right now. Uh, in Canada. I'm like, give me the number for God's sake. So, called Jonathan, had him on the air, minutes after the story came out on the website that he died, and he just had a great laugh about it. He's like, man, I'm not even close to dead. I'm having the best time I've ever had. You know, hopefully I'll be around. More than any other band in recent years, Korn have gained success through the loyalty of its fans. They have successfully carved a healthy following out of middle America and the rest of the world, striking a nerve with a misunderstood heavy music starved youth. Korn have just released their latest album, Untouchables, to critical acclaim and loyal support from their fans. They, uh, their fan base is very strong. Uh, I can't say enough about it because everywhere you go these days you're going to find corn stickers on cars, corn, corn shirts, corn kids. I mean you got 32 year old guys at shows and they call themselves corn kids. It's this fan centric mentality that brings Davis's tales of sexual abuse and general freakdom to an understandable level. This band has taken their psychic traumas and transmuted them into an art form, framing their early pain with slashing guitars and barbaric drumming. In hindsight, these gnashing metal purveyors are by far one of the most popular and provocative rock acts to emerge during the post-grunge era. Their music and social awareness has made for a revolutionary mix that has redefined heavy metal better than anyone has in the last decade. Korn's music is filled with such contrast. This hard rock band samples rap, funk, punk, alternative, whatever. They deserve kudos for finding head-banging energy from any material available. I don't think fame has gone to their head. Uh, there are some bands out there, so just so you guys know I'm not spitting uh, you know, nonsense, that I just can't stand because fame has gotten to them. And I just don't get excited about them when I hear the music. And with Korn, I get excited because they're good guys still. Korn exorcises their demons the only way they know how, with music that was never meant for adults or the mainstream to understand. Music